Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Today, basically, I'm doing, I'm going to finish up the Carrara tutorial today. So, um, last we were, we were left off, we did the um, windshield wipers, I think, or the, the side view mirrors. So, now we just have to finish this bad boy up, I think. And then that's pretty much it, pretty much. So, I'm just going to go invert and I'm just going to hit in here and go hide and so I'm just going to go into here move and I'm just probably gonna put that like that so this piece would be kind of moved in more like like that like that kind of like that and now what we're going to try to do, honestly, is going into here and kind of select this one curve right here. this so that's just going to connect like that And just go into here and Just going to select these with like, the box selection and select, you're right, this. 
and also do this in a way too so when we go into here what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be going into here because we're not really going to be seeing this section too much like once this is done what we can do is go in into here and go weld G I think and that's what it that's what that does basically in a way pretty much and then you're right we would go in into here and just go CTR shift and hit the L key on your keyboard and that uh, that's a shortcut key for link for example also if you add the add key to right there you can actually hit the G key and that automatically switches you right to the link tool right there it's like another shortcut and then I you you notice when I hit right the right click on my mouse button it brings up a small menu that says scale zoom scale move rotate polyline zoom pan dolly so you can pan like this zoom in like that and you can also go into here and bring the go go into here which is this small menu and bring it up to 100 percent again and go move and then this is like dolly you can dolly the camera which if you hit the all button it automatically dollies it anyways you you would pan like this like that like that like experimenting with the right click button I think these are some of the things that 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 is you is like one is one of those universal uh, plugins for a lot of 3D animation software that a lot of people don't even know about I think and then we just you're right we go into here we select that we go we make sure we select that and then it automatically rotates around the selection and then you're right we would go in into here we would select this actually go into here and like that and it automatically does that so when you add smoothing onto here that's what it tends to look like right there pretty much it looks pretty neat and cool I would say pretty much and then right here you can probably go in into here and probably we'll weld these together like that to get that to be functional functional like that pretty much and then what we can do is probably going into here <coughs> go to CTRL for link or we could probably go into here and go add tool so I'm going to show you this new technique so we hit G right here and we go like that and that and go like that right click move we make sure we're on edge select mode and then what we're going to try to do is go dissolve that edge and you're right we're going to hit like you're right dissolve on that edge right there and it automatically keeps everything in straight order like that because for poly is what you need to to get this up and running pretty much I would say with this so we can hit loop right here
Just go extract. Like that. Right click add and then didn't we just hit the G key? Is a good uh, is a good practice that you can get in. Is a very very like very very fast practice I would say. So you write you hit G right here, and you're right you would make everything as much as possible for poly. And then when you hit here, I'm just kind of just like kind of cleaning up the geometry in a way to get this in the right order. Right click move. Except I don't like that down there, so I might have to clean that up right there. And just go into here. You right and go hit that move. Add. So when you go into add, you you can go into weld key like that to end. And it automatically weld those two pieces together. So that's one thing to remember of basically is that. So now that's very, very smooth. I like how the way that looks. So that's like how you would do you write the sophisticated car model of the light system itself. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into here, we're gonna make sure that is selected so we can easily dolly around that very easy. And one of the things I don't like about this is I'm just going to go into here and just going to hit dissolve. So I might have to connect this somehow in a way. I can do it very easy. So free connect. And then just go G key like this. Add key, hit G key on there. Then once you have the add key on, you you would kind of like go into here and repeat the process all over again until you can get like. And this is what happens when you don't have your right sophisticatedly for poly. So now we're just going to hit G key again and just make sure that that's linked. This is what happens when you don't have for poly at all, pretty much. So that's what usually happens. So I'm just going to go into here, dissolve. And you're right, like. That's literally for poly. So you see how the geometry and the topology is very smooth? That's what that's the type of look we're aiming for right there. So that looks very, very respectable, I would say. Right there. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's perfect. So sometimes you have to clean that up and you want to try to look what, what, what our main purpose is looking for any defects on, on this model, to tell you the truth. So sometimes what I'm going to try to do, honestly, is maybe add, you write a sophisticated line right there. And add a line right there move and then just hit G key just add this
And then we, you're right, we can actually connect it with this, I would say. In some cases, it's okay to have three poly. In some cases, it's not, basically. See how the way that goes. So you fix it, the mess, pretty much. So I'm just going to keep it like that. I think that that would definitely be good. We'll keep it like that. That's pretty much a clean mesh. Right there. So now I'm just going to go into here and go... Let's say... I would say... Reveal all. Like that. And only select, let's say... Um, this itself. So that's like the side view mirrors right there, which looks like that pretty much. I mean, we can get rid of that because we're going to duplicate the finished product on the other side. I just wanted to show this as a demonstration of what this thing would look like after it's done pretty much. So 
I'm just going to go in here or hide top and you're right like these are the images that we got right here that we're going to use so we're actually going to do a cut kind of like that and a cut like that so when we go into here for example what we're going to do is we're going to try to construct um, a rectangle and we're going to place that on the x-axis right there for example so when we go in here is kind of like this in a way that's good distance move that out so I'm just going to subdivide that. And I want it to kind of bend more over like that, I would say. Like this. And kind of that swooping motion because what we're going to do is we're going to do like a uh, like a series of things so we're going to do like so yeah that's going to be a sweeping motion like this I would say so we want to try to get the right one right here make sure we don't s select anything by accident put that right here and you're right we're, we're just going to move that right here and you're right move this right here because this is kind of going to kind of be like a curve motion right here for, for the object itself so what we want to try to do is cut straight down right there the middle right there Rotate this. <coughs> Untriangulate. <coughs> so that we want to make sure we got that entire area right here. So that's good. Go move like that.
So I only want this, honestly, to cut more in the middle right here. So that's that's the craziest thing. You only want that to cut in the middle right there. Not really too much about detail, but this is like one technique that you would do to get this out of the way. So I'm just going to stop that right there. Oh. Then I'm just going to go into here and just going to go extrude. Right click move. Right click move. And the H button is extrude. So that's what we would do, honestly. So in here, we would go into here. So what we want to try to do is kind of cut into here somehow. So we want to do a series of cut in, in here and cut this piece right in here, right about there. So what we want to try to focus on is more this mesh right here and go hide. So delete that so we just want this to be cut right here pretty much just to be cut right about here I think if I'm not right wrong I think I should do another extrude like this. Right here, move like that. And you're right, I'm just gonna go into here and just hit weld right there. Weld two together. In this section, what we're gonna tr probably try to do is make sure that that's at none right there. Because you're right, we want to try to somewhat cut right into here, I think. And then we can just work with this, I would say. So we're going to go into here, I think. And we're going to probably start selecting this piece right here. Just only the piece that's going to be cut, I would say. Which is this. That. And... <clears throat> so 
So this piece is going to be the piece that's going to be cut right here to the model. This is the only piece you're right that's literally affected by the cutting process. So this is what we would mainly, to be honest, would really would select is this piece right here. And what we're going to try to do is. not really into per personal detail right here but we're just gonna go copy we're gonna go into another layer we're gonna take the same layer and we're gonna hit like duplicate on one of the items so when we hit duplicate right here create new master shader and we go Reveal all. And just hit delete. And just hit paste right there. So we make sure that we create a new master shader. So the geometry is not even selected. So what we would do is we would go into here. So now we go into here. Is we select this. And then we're going to hit like a cutting process. There's, I think, a cut tool right here, I think, which is cut. So we're going to hit here and cut. I think that's more line. So what we would probably would need, honestly, to be honest, is we would take the Boolean tool and the Boolean tool like that. Actually, I'm going to actually go into here and just go like here and go test one. And I'm going to basically start, go CTR duplicate and put this as test number two. Number two, I think, right here. And just go into here, create new master shader. This one, I'm going to delete dot. This one I'm going to delete dot. So we have two separate objects right here. So this object, what we're going to do is we're going to hit go into here. And this is, to be honest, my honest opinion of a better, a better Boolean function, to be honest. There's a way more better Boolean function to do this. So you're going to go here and you're going to go Boolean into the 3D view menu. Union and just go intersect basically of test one, test two, like that, and doesn't do very well. Boolean modifier and just go you're right seriously un untriangulate like that that's one way you can do it, I would say. So 
one of the reasons why I kind of don't really like Carreras. Like... We're going to do a different way, pretty much. So, probably going to go into here. And now, since we have that, we're just going to go into here. Sometimes this is the best method of getting the job done. Just go G. 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 Sometimes this is, to be honest, the best method of getting the job done, honestly. Because, like, I find that Carrara's Boolean function is not really the very best, to be honest. It, it, it doesn't get the job done as well as Blender and other software. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's, it's, it's still a pretty good modeler in a way. It's, it's not really as bad as you really think, but like when you start getting out there to using more other softwares, you start realizing that there's stuff that's better out there than, than even Carrara itself. There's much more better s stuff out there. And I think w like what I tell a lot of people, to be honest, is to start exploring what's out there, definitely for sure. In terms of computer graphics and computer animation, explore definitely what's out there and explore what type of other software is out there, uh, out on the market. Not just, just mainly just using one, I would say. So I'm just going to go into Add Tool and just go G right here and go move Because, like, to be honest, I've used Carrara for a lot of years, and I don't think it's one of the very best softwares out there. I mean, 
there's a lot of like bugs with it. You just saw in one of the bugs when when you're using the boolean tool. One of the main bugs that you see when you're using the boolean tool. If I were to show you how to use a boolean tool on Blender, you you you'll understand what I'm trying to say. How it doesn't have the same problems as the other software. I mean. In terms, you, you get what you pay for, but I disagree with you get what you pay for because Blender is a, is a free software and is a lot more better to use than, let's say, for example, than uh, Carrara itself. A lot more better, I would say. Way more better. So you would go into Selection on the Cursor menu, and you're right, that's what you do. And... That's what you do itself. And you just shape that up like how the way you want right there. And you're right, you have that already done. And then the only thing you would do, honestly, is you would take this thing right here. And you would just go into here and copy and paste this. And you don't want to affect this one geometry right here. So... Once you once you once you actually hit copy and paste right here, or like let's say a duplicate function right here, Then we would go into here and go duplicate right here. Actually, there's another very, very good process. I'll show you something very fast. You would hit copy right here. You would hit delete. And then you hit paste. So once that's paste is a separate entity, you're right. You can go into here and, and go duplicate and you're right you go hide and you take this you go delete and you're right you go reveal so you make sure that this is a separate uh, item itself which we want that as a separate item that's a little technique you could also copy and paste this item onto another layer on another vortex layer on Carrara which you'll see pretty soon I would say so now since we have that done, we're just going to go into here and we're just going to hit hide right there. And we're going to start taking this right here. And we're just going to start adding a polygon tool onto here. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go into here and go into the polygon tool or right click so there's no right click for polygon but if you click on this a couple of times you eventually hit a polygon tool and then what we what we were gonna do is when we he see this small little box right there right next to the poly vertice that we select that means it's already locked in place and ready to connect and, and weld these po points together like that. So like that. It automatically has a connecting function on here. So make sure that that box selection, that small little box that you select right here is already selected like that. So when that selects like that, then you're right, we're going to select the polygon tool again and we're going to gonna actually end up selecting this again. Wait a sec. Actually, I'm going to actually go into here. And 
and actually hit actually extrude like that like that not too much and I'm just gonna actually go into here and actually go right click move and select this right here and just go into here and just go just gonna go into here and just hit bridge right here just go right click add and just add two vertices like that move right that there Hello, 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 hello. I'm back, I'm back. And today I'm going to be showing you like a Carrara tutorial of what I did and what I've did so far on this. And this is like the final result of this. And that's what it actually looks like right there. And as you can see, it looks very, very fantastic. Very, very good. And that's what the final product of the, of part 12 would look like. This is what the final body shell of a car looks like. So as you can see, we did the windows, we did the side view mirrors, we finished up the windows, we did that on chapter, I think, um, two. We're gonna be working more on um, getting the side of the car done, like working more on the side getting the door handles on this done, getting the top ridges on here done, getting more like the thing right here, the windshield wipers done. Maybe do the windshield wipers on this and maybe on the side of this, we might end up working on like the gas tank on this and more start working on the side lights of the car itself. Any small little details like the side lights, all of that, and random things like that. And then in chapter two, we're going to work on um, the, um, on chapter three, we're going to work on the front and doing the front lights and all the front of this, like the front grill, the front lights, everything on here. Chapter four. We're gonna work on the back, doing the front, the back lights, the 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 thing that connects right here, and doing like the the BMW logo. And then on chapter um, five, we're gonna add in the rims on the car and all that. So I'm gonna be doing a separate tutorial on like how to model Carrara Carrara how to model a car rim, and how to model car tires on Carrara, I think. On a separate tutorial, I might end up doing that, basically. So, if you could stay tuned, that's what I might end up doing in the future in Carrara. So, that's what I'm going to do in the future, definitely for sure in Carrara, I would say. And I hope you like my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it a lot. And... I hope you, you liked it and stay tuned for chapter two. So I'm gonna go into here and go into here more in the depths of this car. And this is what the car looks like. And um, that's a full dense mesh when it's fully smoothed right here. As you can see, I did the underbody of the car, all of that and the top mirrors, everything, and yeah, this is what I did so far, and this is what I did so far. That's what it looks like. It looks pretty good. It looks absolutely phenomenal. And what else? I guess that's it. I mean, this video is supposed to be very short, so just to show you a final result of what the car looks like and let me just go into camera 
So that's it. And then I just kind of just like hit like a very fast render. And that's pretty much it, pretty much. And that's what the render looks like of the car itself. So it looks very phenomenally good. So I guess that's it with the video. I hope you like it. And I hope you really, really enjoy it. And please subscribe. And give me likes as well. And, and subscribe to my videos. And please view as much as you like. I'm here to help you at any time. Thank you. Goodbye.